A couple of days ago I released the installation for Half-Life on your PlayStation Classic through BleemSync. Today we're going to do the same thing through AutoBleem. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into it. We just need to go to our web browser and we're going to hop over to this link right over here. As always, links will be in the description down below. Now with BleemSync, it was very straightforward. However, with AutoBleem, it's a little bit different. And I do want to give you guys a little bit notice. It's not actually running through AutoBleem, but it'll be running through RetroArc or RetroBoot if that's what you're using. In my case, I am running the latest version of AutoBleem with RetroBoot, so that's what I'm going to do my tutorial based off of. If you guys haven't upgraded to the latest version of AutoBleem, I highly recommend it. Uh, and I will leave a link in the description down below for you guys to get a video on how to upgrade to the latest AutoBleem with RetroBoot. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are just going to go ahead and download this xash3d.zip file. We're going to go ahead and save that right to our desktop. And as you can see here, this is the xash 3 d beta dash bleemsync version. We do want that. We aren't going to use everything within it, but we're definitely going to need parts of this build. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Next, towards the bottom, you're going to see there's an xhash 3 d launcher core for RetroArch users. We're going to need that as well. So I'm going to download that. And I'm going to save that right to my desktop just the same. And now we've got the two files we need. We can go ahead and minimize our web browser. I'm gonna pull over the two files that we just downloaded from my other screen over here. So there's the BleemSync build, and this is the RetroArch launcher. So we're gonna right click on both files and we're gonna extract them to their own folder. So here's one, and here's the other one. Now we're going to need to make sure that our AutoBleem build is actually connected to our computer. So mine is, I'm just going to go ahead and pull mine up. I'm going to drag it over to the far right, and that's what we're going to use. So as you can see, I've got my AutoBleem build here. I've got my RetroArch folder. I've got games, AutoBleem, etc. So first, we're going to double click on our BleemSync beta, and that's going to give us a BleemSync folder and an XAsh folder. We don't need to touch this BleemSync folder at all. All we need to do is copy over our xash folder. Inside of it, we're going to see that there is a valve folder that has all of our configuration that we want. Additionally, we have a couple more configuration files within this folder. So we want this folder the way it is. We're going to go ahead and copy this over to our AutoBleem USB drive. And now that that's done, we no longer need this version of the xash 3D. We can close that. And now we're going to open up the RetroArch one. So it looks the same. It looks like there's an XAsh and a BleemSync uh, folder within it. However, it is a little bit different. When you open up the XAsh folder, there's nothing but a launch.sh. So there's a script for launching your game. And then that is what we're going to need to copy over as well. So we're going to click this. We're going to drag it over to the XAsh folder here. We're done with that. Now what we need to do is open up this BleemSync folder. And inside, there's a few more folders we have to navigate through. OPT, RetroArch dot config retroarch again and then we've got a cores folder and an info folder within the cores folder you've got the core itself for the xash 3d launcher and then we've also got the info for that core so what we need to do is we need to move over the core and the info file to the proper file folder within our usb drive easiest way to do that is to double click on your retroarch folder and right away we are here so as you can see we've got our cores folder right here and we've got our info folder right here I do want to make note if you're using an older version of RetroArch or you're using an older version of AutoBleem, it may not be exactly like this. You may have to go through a couple more folders until you locate this. Um, but if that's the case, it's totally fine. You just got to find your cores folder where all of your cores for RetroArch would sit, as well as your info folder where all of the information for those cores are going to be as well. So first we're going to transfer over our core. So we're going to double click on the core, open this up, and we're just going to click and drag that over. That's going to be done. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the info folder. So we're just going to go back and we're going to find our info folder and we're just going to click and drag it over. So once it's in there, you're going to see it's right towards the bottom. So now we have both our info configuration file as well as our core loaded up into our AutoBleem and RetroBoot build. 
Now that we're done that, we can go ahead and close this. We're gonna go back to our USB drive. We're gonna open up the XASH folder and we're gonna open up the Valve folder. Just like we did with the BleemSync build, we need to locate the files on our PC for our Valve information for Half-Life and transfer it into this folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and find it now. So that's gonna be located in my C drive. And then if we scroll down, we're gonna to go to Program Files x86. We're gonna scroll down for Valve, Half-Life, and we're gonna go into Valve again. And then we're here. So all we need to do here is we're gonna select everything. We're gonna copy it and drag it over to our USB drive. It's gonna transfer everything over relatively quickly. And again, it's going to ask us if we want to replace the files on our USB drive. When that happens, the answer to that is no. There's gonna be a few files that have the same name. We do not wanna overwrite them. We do not wanna replace them. We wanna keep the existing configuration files in place while we're doing this transfer. I'm just gonna quickly speed up until this is all finished and then I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by that. Okay, so this is what I mean. It's gonna say the destination has nine files with the same name. We're gonna either replace the files in the destination, skip these files, or let me decide for each file. Doesn't matter what we're doing here in terms of each file, we just want to skip all of these files or we don't wanna get rid of any of the existing files. So we're gonna click skip these files. Perfect, we are done and we are actually finished now with our USB drive. All that's left for us to do, pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic and load up Retro Boot. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my PlayStation Classic now. All right, so here we are with our Auto Bleem loaded up and I'm currently using a PlayStation 4 controller. The reason I'm doing this is because when they were working on developing the configuration for Half-Life, they did it with a PlayStation 4 controller in mind. And the reason for that is because you want to use both analog sticks. You can absolutely use the PlayStation Classic controller, but you do have to remap the buttons in order for it to be configured properly. Additionally, I don't think any other controllers other than PS4 and the PlayStation Classic have been tested. So if you wanted to use an Xbox One controller or something along those lines, as it stands right now, you will not be able to, or at least they haven't been tested. So you can certainly try and you can certainly try to remap them, but as it stands right now, it's probably best and easiest for you to grab a PS4 controller, pop that in and use that. So hopefully you guys have one of those laying around at home, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. We're gonna load up RetroArch and again, as I said, this isn't actually technically running through AutoBleam, but it is running through RetroArc or RetroBoot if that's what you guys have in place. We're gonna go ahead and press square. And now we've got our RetroBoot loaded up. As you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, I am running 1.7.7 RetroBoot with no core. So as you can see, there isn't a game loaded up other than what the stock games would have been for the PlayStation Classic. And the way that you're gonna get Half-Life to load is a little bit different. What we need to do is first, we need to select the core. So we're gonna go ahead and go to select core and we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna look for X-Ash 3D Launcher. So we're gonna hit X on that. And then we don't have to do anything else. All we need to do at this point is just start the core. So we're gonna go ahead and hit X. and Half-Life is now loaded up. So all we need to do from here is we just need to go ahead and start a new game. So really quickly, before I get into the actual gameplay footage, I'm gonna let you guys know that they've configured a couple of uh, really cool features there. If you're in the middle of the game and you wanna save your game, all you have to do is press the L2 button. The L2 button on your PS4 controller has been mapped as the quick save button. Now there is absolutely no way to do like a quick load, uh, if you're in the middle of the game and you want to reload your uh, your save point, you can't do that. You have to exit out and then reload your game. Um, but either way, I just wanted to let you guys know about that before I got started. I'm not going to do much more talking. I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of gameplay footage, just like I did in the BleemSync version. And then that's pretty much it for this video, guys. So let's go ahead and load up uh, Half-Life and let's see how it looks. Immediate openings are available in the areas of materials handling and low clearance security. Please contact Black Mesa personnel for further information. If you have an associate with the background in the areas of theoretical physics, biotechnology, or other high-tech disciplines, please contact our civilian recruitment team. The Black
Black Mesa Research Facility is an equal opportunity employer. A reminder to all Black Mesa personnel. Regular radiation and biohazard screenings are a requirement of continued employment in the Black Mesa Research Facility. Missing a scheduled urinalysis or radiation checkup is grounds for immediate termination. If you feel you have been exposed to radioactive or other hazardous materials in the course of your duties, contact your radiation safety officer immediately. Work safe. Work smart. Your future depends on it. Now arriving at Sector C test labs and control facilities. Please stand back from the automated door and wait for the security officer to verify your identity. Before exiting the train, be sure to check your area for personal belongings. Thank you, and have a very safe and productive day. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. Hello, Gordon Freeman. It's good to see you. Hey, Mr. Freeman. I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my files. Just one of those days, I guess. They were having some problems down in the test chamber, too, but I think that's all straightened out. They told me to make sure you headed down there as soon as you got into your hazard suit. Greetings. Hello. Freeman. This is all within theoretical limits. Do we all have to wear this ridiculous clothes? Welcome to the HEV Mark IV Protective Systems. Standard specimens. Go ahead, Gordon. Slot the carrier into the analysis board. And there it is, guys. That's pretty much all I've got for you in this video. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I hope you guys really enjoy playing Half-Life on your PlayStation Classic through RetroArch and Autobleam.
Remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.